Started out by ripping all my plywood sheets. 25 inches on some of these boards and then 22 and a half inches on some of the other boards. Another tip, especially when you're using these kind of uh, straight edges to guide your saw, I would still put a 90 on it because I noticed it could be off a 16th and this thing is still clamped down and you feel like you're solid. So double check your work. You can see here I've got just about all the big pieces cut out for two cabinets, one board left, and small boards like this are gonna have to get cut down to all the small pieces listed, like uh, K, I, J, L, all those. All right, if you did everything right, you should have a pile of wood. So here's all my pile of wood for one cabinet, pile of wood for the second cabinet. Got scraps, parts, pieces, just junk laying everywhere. So you have a little bit of plywood left over. So if you make a mistake on some of the smaller pieces, you've still got some wood left to work with. Uh, so what I did is I took one of those scraps and worked out the G board angles on that piece of scrap. Uh, so still got plane left, now we're time to assemble. Now we're at the point where we really need to start looking at some numbers. So it's important to look at these distances they have marked off. Where the corner of this board is, you'll see the section of 8.14 inches meets 6.21. Find that, find this 10 and a half inch mark. Uh, down here, I'm looking for a 22.9 inch mark where the K board starts. And down here near the bottom, find where 4.375 meets 4.42. Uh, so once we find those spots on our board, we're going to mark those spots off and we're going to draw a line between them. Having drawn this line, going all the way up, we can see where we're going to have to lay a board down. Alright, so I drew another line parallel to that that's three quarters of an inch. This is where the most back board is going to lay down. So this is important. Uh, we need to have this laid out. And when you're looking at the drawing, you're looking up this drawing, we're talking about this back board labeled H. The H board lays down on this line we just drew. So it's important to lay out all the parts and pieces now. So I'm going to actually confirm with the H board the actual width of the board, but I'm going to go ahead and draw all the rest of these pieces. All this stuff here, I'm going to go ahead and draw it on this side board. Then I'm going to put some little pilot holes uh, all the way through it so I can use this board as a template so I know how to lay out the next board. All right, by this stage, I'm going to call this just about the point of no return. If you didn't measure everything perfectly correct, you're going to end up with a box that makes some sound, but it could be noise instead of the sound you're looking for. Uh, so I'll show you a couple things that may trip you up on this. So if I'm looking at the actual paperwork here, it has some numbers down here. Uh, and so I have my J board lined up. Just like it says, 4.375 away from the back wall. Great. Wonderful. Uh, and then I measured three quarters of an inch there to start making my next measurement for the next board over here. But what I find in reality is three quarter inch board isn't really three quarters of an inch. Alright, so if I lay an actual board in there, you will see there is a gap. So a three quarter inch board isn't quite three quarters of an inch. Uh, this is what Home Depot sells, so it's going to be off. So it's going to throw everything off. So this mark here is not going to be where it should be. Uh, so if you take a measurement off of the actual edge of the wood, 
Now you're gonna find this line is gonna be a little off. So you have to re-measure that. So if I take like my eye board, for example, the eye board is gonna determine the angle of this next board here as it hits the G board up there. Uh, so if I use my straight edge and put it on the edge of the G board and angle it this way, uh, I can take a look and say, hey, does that line up correctly? And it doesn't line up quite with the mark that I made here. It still leaves quite a bit of a gap on my eye board. So I'm going to use PL glue. It is going to fill in some, but that's a pretty big discrepancy. So now I'm going to go back and remeasure the eye board to make sure it is actually correct. The other thing that could throw you off is when you measure that 10 and a half way up here, uh, don't measure it from the outside of the board. It's got to be 10 and a half from the inside of this first board. So that'll throw you off almost a three quarter of an inch because what should happen is by the time I get here on the outside, let's just say this is my front panel board here. It sits on the G board. By the time I get there, this is now measuring 10 and a half instead of the actual board. So I'm still off by uh, almost three quarters of an inch. So at this point, I'm going to go back to the drawing board and figure out what went wrong. Apparently, my angle was off on the eye boards, and that's a big deal. Um, you get these angles off, it does not sound the way it was intended to sound. So your speaker should go in through a little alleyway here, come all the way down, and it should get wider as you go, which this does, but those angles need to be correct. So it looks like I'm back on track here, and it's time to start putting this thing together. Before you get started with all of your measurements, it's super important to lay a board down on the edge of your side board, which is the A board, lay a board down and draw a line all the way around, all the way around, because all the measurements on the paperwork are based on there being wood there. See, there is a piece of wood there, a piece of wood here. So I just did all my measurements wrong, which is why you want to dry fit everything before you start gluing this all together. This is the point of no return. To assemble this Chinese jigsaw puzzle, I went ahead and marked up my H board. I made marks at eight inches on the bottom where this J board are gonna attach. And right at 12 and a half inches, I made a mark for my K board to attach. So I'm gonna glue and screw on those boards first because they sit on the bottom. I won't have no way to access them except for take care of this first. I'm also gonna put in the I boards because I won't be able to get to them from the bottom also. Uh, so this is probably the hardest part for me. So let me go ahead and get this attached. All right, I've got everything lined up. Uh, so just to document my measurements uh, from the edge of the board, I'm eight inches in on here. And then of course I switched to millimeters because that's more accurate for me, 110, 256. I'm making these marks. Uh, that way I know where the boards are gonna go. So this is the K board, I know the I boards, J, J board. So I know what boards are gonna go where. So I have this marked on both sides of the board so I know what I'm doing. You could actually mark it just on one side if you wanted to, maybe you draw some, drill some index holes or something, but I went ahead and drew it on both sides. I can't emphasize enough how much you have to make sure everything is in place, everything is labeled, you know which end is which before you start putting boards on here because you cannot take this thing back apart. You're gonna use PL glue, it's gonna expand, it's gonna fill the gaps. I'm gonna use these little uh, carpentry screws that's hard to focus on with a square head. Um, and yeah, I'm going to use a nail gun just to kind of help me get started.
I went ahead and drilled some indexing holes, uh, kind of at the you know top of each board, so I have a line I can use uh, to measure across there and pop a line, so I don't have to do so many measurements again. So I know kind of where the boards are because once you start trying to screw this from the outside, yeah, it's just going to be crazy. If you don't have something to go by, you will miss and put holes everywhere. So put yourself a couple of indexing holes so you kind of know where to start and we'll see how it goes. So you're going to want to get your top board on and the back board on connected to that side. That will be your next step. So you want to use PL glue. This is not the one you want to use. You want to use the 3X that expands. This max crap does not expand and so I'm going to waste a ton of this $11 stuff trying to fill this in. So. Just letting you know. All right, so next we're going to try to get some of this interior done. All right, at this point you need a helper because you're going to need to have all of these pieces on. K board, make sure you mark it. Your J boards need to be on. I boards need to be on. Everything needs to be ready to go because we're going to flip this thing over and start screwing it down. So hopefully you made all your measurements. This is probably the most difficult part of the whole build right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut out the uh, circles on the baffle, which is the F board. So the way I did this is I marked off, I think it's nine and a quarter inches from the edge to the center of the speaker. And of course, 12 and a half from each side. So I found a dead center, put a nail in it. And I use this little contraption, which is basically a piece of string. And we'll grab my other part. Got a piece of string. And I uh, measure it out by, get my finger out of the way here. I'm literally holding the string, I'm trying to grab this and my pencil. So I'm literally holding the pencil and string like this and just going around pulling it tight keeping it all the way around and you got to go back through and measure this and make sure you're measuring the right distance all the way around for me I'm going metric so this is like 426 millimeters all the way across uh, then I grab the biggest drill bit I can pop me a hole right there Use the jigsaw to go all the way around this thing. And then remove my pizza pie here. And uh, if everything is fine, I should be able to sit the speaker. I'm going to sit the speaker under there and make sure all the way around here it's clear. Uh, because the speaker will go through. I mean, as far as the... It needs to make sure there's nothing on the edge that can rub the speaker. It's got to be clearly cut. Show you that in just a second. All right, so haven't cleaned this up yet, but uh, you can see even with my crooked cutting, the big thing is you want to make sure if you get speaker moving up and down, which it will, that none of this hits any of the wood edge if it jumps in. So this has got to be fairly clean. So I'm going to go through there and just make sure all of this is clean all the way around. There's nothing sticking out anywhere. Looks like this one's okay. I cut it on the edge of being too big, but it's okay so far. Uh, so next thing is I need to carefully draw around here and figure on where the holes are going to be. All right, now that I'm sure that my speaker is sitting center of where it needs to be, I went around there and felt to make sure it's clearing all the way around and looked at inside. Make sure you place these top bolt holes off equally to the side because you just have no meat left to work with here so your bolt and holes need to kind of go around there so you're going to mark off where these bolt holes are really i'm going to have to mark it from the inside of here and uh, this pencil is not long enough to reach in here so i'm going to have to get something smaller sharper i'm going to get an awl and find a center dot where i can drill those and for just for information this is the speaker I chose to use uh, you can put a 3000 watt amp I actually have a pair of these already and I'm using a Behringer NX 6000 
These are four ohm speakers, so I have one on each side of the amp. I can push a full 3000 to it, and it, it, it gets really loud. I have tested it at full volume, and it's great. This is an awl. It's just a pointy little, looks like a screwdriver with a point to it. You're going to use this to get inside of these holes. Find a spot that is, to your eye, dead center. You're going to poke it. Put a little dent in there, see if I can show it. You want to put a little dent where it's fairly dead center, and if you're having any doubt if you're dead center, poke it again. So you're going to make sure these are all dead center. Alright, now that I have these all marked off, uh, I can drill all of these holes. You see here, I missed center with a little one, so I went back and put a little bit bigger one, so I know it's the bigger one, that's the correct center. Uh, so now that I have these all marked off, I'm going to go ahead and use this for a template to cut the next hole out. Now that my holes are all drilled, I'm going to want to put in these T-nuts. And uh, to put these in, you basically want to make sure you clean all this trash out of the way. Let's see if I can get it out of the way with my finger. It's probably a bad idea. Uh, but you want this stuff out of the way. That way when you go to put a screw in it, it's not going to get in the way of your screw. Uh, so I'm just on a hard surface and I'm just going to tap them in. Uh, some people like to pull them in with a screw. I just like to tap them in with a hammer, but as long as you get them all in there, you're good to go. Alright, you should have the baffle board on now. Everything's sealed up. So the speaker fires down through the hole, passes through this chamber here, comes around this chamber here, goes all the way up. It's going to have a top piece up there, and it's going to exit out of the bottom there. So I'm going to have to do a little sanding for whatever reason. I got a little edge sticking out there. Some cut didn't quite get cut right. So uh, before I can stick this sideboard on, everything's going to have to be pretty much perfect. Next up, you're going to want to put in your Q board, which goes all the way down. And this is what the front panel is going to sit on, and it's what the D is going to sit on. So once I put in the Q board, I put in the D board, then I screw the P board right under that. Next, I'm going to put in the M boards. Alright, so you're going to want to put the back M board in first, so you can reach your hand in here to put some screws. Put some screws at the top, then you're going to attach the second one. Alright, you're going to want to have your N and O boards. Basically, I put the E board, the top board on, where that's going to have a keystone. And just put a little pressure on it and make sure these sit where it needs to sit. You can kind of slide them around and get them placed to where they're good and level. And then just leave this alone and let the glue dry for a while. Make sure when you attach this M board... Attach it up top first before you attach it down there or it will have the tendency if you put it there first As soon as you start tightening down on top, it'll close the gap and bend this whole board over Done it and had to put it all the way back apart again. So Make sure you do the top first All right, you're gonna want to go ahead and do some painting. I just use some cheap uh, paint primer and flat black you just want to cover the inside that's going to be showing. Not all of that's going to be showing, but go ahead and just cover that up. The rest is going to get Duratex. All right. They are complete structurally. Uh, still ugly as hell because I just finished doing a little painting on the inside. All the boards that will make a difference, you know, the edges of these boards. Uh, it's just got like a single coat of just cheap black paint just to kind of start getting it covered. I still need to do some work on them. Uh, but next up, I am going to use Bondo to fill all these little screw holes. I will Bondo all that. I'm gonna have to sand off all this glue out and then roll on the Duratex. All right, at this point, I have taken to Bondo and everywhere I had a screw hole, went ahead and filled it in with Bondo. If I had a little Unevenness somewhere filled it in with Bondo. So you can see how I filled it in and sanded it. I had some little areas right here where wood wasn't quite even when I bolted it together. Hey, fix it with a little Bondo. 
So at this point, the cabinet's pretty much as ugly as it's going to get, and I am about to start rolling on some Duratex. I haven't used my roller in about a year, and uh, it was kind of stuck. So this first coat, though it's got a little black to it, it is seriously ugly because the brush was getting stuck and just swiping. So this next coat's going to have to be heavier, and now that I've got the brush freed up, hopefully it'll look a little bit better. All right, here we go. This cabinet has one light coat on it. This cabinet has two coats, one really light and messed up. And the... All right, so got the second coat on this cabinet. You can still see some sword rolls and miscellaneous, but it's got two coats on it. I'm running out of Duratex, so this cabinet's going to get one kind of a thick coat done by hand the best I can. And don't forget to do your keystone plates. Uh, so that's where I'm now. Now I'm going to run inside and wire up. Shut the hell up. I'm going to wire up. Now I got to wire up. Hey! Now I got to wire up the jack plates. I like to use uh, actual Nutric. Neutric, however you pronounce it. The real deal, not the knockoff versions. You're going to go this far. These are hard cabinets to get into and work with, uh, so you might as well wire it right. So you're going to have to drill it in the back about eight or nine inches down from the top and reach in and grab your cable. Uh, and that's going to give you plenty of cable. Like I said, I only have about a two foot whip on it. Uh, so all I have left to do is let these finish drying. So I just pull out a coat on the back of this one. As soon as these dry, I'm going to go ahead and put some rubber feet on them, put the speakers on, front grills on, and rock and roll. One speaker installed. Uh, I used a little Loctite blue on every bolt, went around and tightened them really good uh, because this thing needs it. And you got to make sure you keep these bolts cranked down pretty good. Uh, or long term it will work themselves loose uh, so I'm putting on the front panel now all right front panel on and uh, I'm gonna put some screws on it also put some wooden I mean, rubber feet on the side rubber feet on the bottom um, so I can stack these so I'm gonna go with some fairly tacky looking gold screws just because it's what I have uh, stay tuned Honestly, I don't think I mind the gold screws. All right, so here's one completed cabinet. 